Hello there. In this video, we're going to go through a couple examples that summarize all of the different types of transformations that can be performed on some function. So let us assume we want to sketch the graph of f of x is equal to negative 3 times x minus 2 to the quantity squared plus 7. So let us sort of identify what is going on here. So definitely plus 7 is going to be an up 7 transformation. The x minus 2 is definitely going to be a right 2 transformation. This negative sign definitely implies that some function is going to be upside down. And this 3 scaling factor means it's going to be compressed towards the y-axis. And what is the primary function that is being transformed here? Well, that's going to be the function 5x is equal to x squared. So let's start with that function and start to transform it into the function that we want. So let's call the first transformation f1 of x to be equal to x squared. So what does this function look like? Well, that function is going to be equal to the parabola. So let us flip this upside down. So uh, actually, let's shift it to the right too. Let's do x minus 2 squared. So that's going to shift everything to the right too. So the vertex is going to be located there. So we have that parabola. So what about f3 of x equals, let's flip it upside down and compress it. So negative 3, x minus 2 squared. So that's going to be same vertex, uh, but it's going to be flipped upside down. It's going to be compressed uh, towards the center axis. And then finally, f of x, which is going to be our, our, our main curve. So we're going to shift that up 7. So if this is 7 and this is 2, then it's going to have uh, that type of graph. So it's flipped up. It's a parabola flipped upside down, compressed towards its center axis, a uh, shift to the right to an up 7. So that's going to be our target graph. And let's look at another example. Suppose we want to find g of x is equal to negative two-thirds times the cube root of x plus one minus two. And the minus two is outside of the cube root symbol. So what is the primary function that is being transformed here? That's definitely the first thing you need to identify. So the primary function or the parent function is going to be psi of x is equal to the cube root of x. Or some people say x to the one-third. So you need to know what that curve looks like. So what does that curve look like? So let's call that uh, something more simpler than psi. Let's call it like g of 1 of x. So g of 1 of x is going to be the cube root of x. So that's going to be equal to this curve. So it has that sidewards x cubed type of behavior. So g2 of x. So what transformation should we do next? So let's do the horizontal shift. That's the safest one to do. So the cube root of x plus 1. So we're going to shift it to the left 1. Remember, plus is left, minus is right, if it's affecting the domain value. Now let's apply this um, factor in the front. So remember, the minus in front flips it upside down, not up, upside down. And this stretches it. It stretches it because that number two thirds is less than one, not bigger than one. So that's going to make it a little bit more wider and it's going to flip upside down. So instead of being of that orientation, it's going to be that orientation a little bit wider. So g3 of x, so we'll apply the negative two thirds cube root of x plus one transformation and we'll do the final graph last. So this is going to be equal to upside down, a little bit wider. This isn't drawn to scale, but uh, you know, let us assume that's a little bit wider than that one. So this distance is definitely wider than that distance for sure, at least by my eyes. And then g4 of x, which is gonna be equal to our target graph. So we're just going to take this and shift it down two units. 
So we're going to focus on this point here and just move it down two points. Now this uh, may not be too clear because it may seem like I'm moving another point down. So let us assume we're just picking that curve up and moving it down. So that is, we're, we're assuming that point and that point are the same, and we're assuming that point and that point are the same. And we're assuming that point and that point are the same. But that's just, you know, the basic idea of how to perform transformations if you have all of those transformations uh, in one function. Now there is something else that needs to be mentioned because uh, some textbooks or some teachers may include another factor. Uh, so as an example, Suppose we have f of x is equal to, say, 3x minus 2, the quantity squared, uh, plus 5. And let's assume there's like a, I don't know, a 4 in the front of it. So this definitely is going to shift it up 5 units. There's definitely a horizontal shift here, but it's not exactly 2. And this is going to be a compression factor, but it's not going to be equal to 4 because we have this number here that's sort of transforming the domain just a tad bit. So what you can actually do, and we'll get into all these algebraic tricks later, is we can factor this three out of this expression. So we can write f of x is equal to four times three times x minus two thirds, and that quantity is being squared plus five. And now we can apply the square to both that term and that term. So we get that x of x is going to be equal to 4 times 3 squared times x minus 2 thirds squared plus 5. And then we have this 3 squared, which is 9, and 9 times 4 is going to be 36. So f of x is going to be equal to 36 times x minus 2 thirds squared plus 5. And this form for the function actually is a little bit more easier to interpret. Why? Because this is a compression factor of 36. This means we're shifting it to the right two thirds units. And we're shifting it again up five units. That didn't change from the original interpretation. But when you have a number in front of x, the compression factor is going to be the same sign as that number, but the value for which it has is going to be a little bit different. And if there's a number in front of this x term, you cannot directly look at that number and determine the horizontal shift. You have to sort of do a factor out of manipulation type of thing in order to clearly see exactly what that shift is. Or you can just take that number there and divide by the number in front of x, and that usually will give you uh, the horizontal shift factor uh, and the direction is determined by that minus or plus sign. And this algebraic trick can be applied to a lot of functions but not all um, which is why some people do not focus on it because it can actually be transformed into the other uh, three basic types of transformations that we talked about. Namely vertical transformations, horizontal transformations, and the compression stretching factor towards and from the y-axis.